Hi, you guys. It is your esoteric empress, goddess Serenity here, aka Serenity Soul Invictus. And today I want to do a special video. I wanted to talk about something. I wanted to talk about our ancestors. I wanted to talk about this for a while, but I was doing my necessary research before I came on, just like kind of repeating what other people said and everything. So I like to get into it myself. Right now, I am contemplating setting up an ancestor altar, but the apartment that I live in is kind of small, so I don't have that extra room, the extra bedroom or guest room or study or office or whatever to set up that altar in, and I don't want to set it up in my bedroom or where the kids are or in the living room where the kids usually are. I don't want to set it up like that. I want it to be in its own special separate place. And so I'm going to find other ways now to honor and pay tribute to my ancestors. Now, let me just start out talking about my grandmother, my most immediate ancestor, who I was close to. My grandmother's 80th birthday would have passed on Monday. And is it Monday? Was it Monday? Yes, on Monday, the 5th of February. And my mom messaged me and reminded me that hey you know you know moms would have been 80 today you know if we're she's still here in this physical realm but she is no longer here and so right now that's what led me to start looking into these ancestors and ancestor money aka joss paper all of this different stuff so first of all i want to start out by talking about what my grandma means to me what she did for me like she gave up her whole life not just for me but for her own kids for her all four of them you know she had two girls and two boys and then there came me and i had cousins two cousins they were boys but they came far after i did and i was basically the one living in the house was born and raised not born in the house but i was from I left the hospital after birth, I was in that house, I was living there. And so I just want to say thanks so much from the bottom of my heart to my grandmother. Um, Betty, her name was affectionately known as Betty or Bet, you know, but she was Elizabeth Nemour Charlton. And I just want to put this out there because in a way, this is my tribute to her. I have not been to her gravesite since she died, and that was about 15 years ago. She was that she was, she was. She passed away when I was pregnant with my son. My son is now 15, so I didn't find out I was pregnant yet until after she died, and that was a little bit touching. But I want to say to uh, people who deal with children, stay at home moms like myself, all of that, I want to put this out there, that the job you guys are doing is irreplaceable. Nobody can replace that. Your giving of yourself is selfless, you know, it is the essence of God, of love, you know, and that's what we need more of in the world. And it's amazing that so many people who have given so much, sacrificed so much of their lives, for our benefit to see us grow and get this big to reach this point and so much atrocities are going on the young people are like they've gone mad i don't understand it so i want to just say something to the stay-at-home moms to the parents and guardians who are not having the most easy time doing this stay strong stay encouraged because what you're doing like i said before can never be replaced and you know it's something that the whole world doesn't have to see and give you praise for but guess what your thanks the the the, the payback is going to be so amazing that you will never imagine what it could be the uh, the, the 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 strength that it must take the courage all of that you don't find that every day and so, you know, stay strong, stay focused. I mean, you're awesome for doing what you do. And so back to my grandma now, I, this has led me to research all of this because of the selflessness that she had. And now that I'm a stay at home mom, I'm seeing every day the things that she talk about, the things that she must have gone through, not just with me, but with her own children, but especially me growing up in this more modern times, like in the 80s and 90s, I'm sure that was not easy at all. And so 
I'm going to say right now, we know the Christian faith, the Christian faith, which I was raised in, um, that is something that in the Western part of the world that kind of inhibits, prohibits you from, from caring at all for the deceased, for the dead. Like that is a religion that basically teaches you that when you are dead, you know, you're gone, that the dead know nothing. Um, this is like in Luke, the book of Luke, Luke 9, uh, 59 and 60. The dead know nothing or let the dead bury their dead. That's the book of Luke. And then there's Ecclesiastes that say they have no further reward. Even their name is forgotten. You know, for thousands of years, people all around the world and more of the eastern parts of the world have honored their dead, have have not worshipped so much, but honored their dead, have respected and paid tribute and homage to the dead. Because if it weren't for them, we would not be here. So I don't understand, you know, a lot of it now that I have kind of start, started this new journey of, of spirituality, seeking truth, seeking wisdom and knowledge. You know, I have come to learn that now that's something that's important to me. That's one of the reasons why I haven't gone back to her gravesite since she died because I started going uh, years ago, I started going to the Jehovah Witnesses Church. And I must say, they taught me a lot about the Bible. I caught a more understanding, a deeper understanding and, you know, acceptance of a lot of the scriptures in the Bible. However, one thing that stood out to me that, that kind of changed my mindset was about the dead. And that same scripture, those same scriptures that, you know, the dead know nothing, because that kind of led me to believe that, okay, going back to a gravesite, looking at a gravestone and like talking to a grave is preposterous. That, you know, that makes no sense. That it's like basically like you're communicating with ghosts. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I didn't believe in ghosts. And that's what, now that I'm seeking so much of the truth and I think I'm coming to a better awakening, a more conscious awakening. I realize that that is not the way I want to go anymore. I realize that, you know, if it weren't for your ancestors, where would you be? <laughs> you won't be here today. And so the hard work, the dedication, the love, the selflessness, like I selflessness, like I said, my grandma was the kind of woman who would give you the skin off her back, not just her shirt. She'd give you the skin off of her chest and back if you needed it, okay? That's the type of person she was. And so for her to be just forgotten like that, I think, no, I have a problem with that. And so that's why I'm doing this video today. Um, so you guys out there could, um, could relate. If you do relate, you know, I want you to like hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think about this topic, about your ancestry, about how you feel about this whole honoring the dead and stuff like that. I want to know what you guys think about it. So not knowing my paternal ancestry line as well. I only know of my grandfather on my father's side. Um, and he's passed on, but he was 93 when he died back in 2011. That's the only part of my paternal side that I really know about. And But I found out some information online about him as well. And I'm trying to get even deeper research because it's not just my maternal ancestry that I'm looking at. I'm looking at both sides. So right now, I'm trying to do rituals. I'm trying to do prayers and stuff like that that are going to kind of give me better information, give me a little more knowledge and insight into my family and ancestry line. Seeing that I have a dead big dad, that part was a little missing. <laughs> so I have to do some deep digging to find that all out. But like I said, after what she's done for me, my grandmother has done for me, I could not just let her be forgotten that way. And now here's where we get into the other part, the paying tribute and honoring of your ancestors. Okay. Now we know beside your family and close bloodline and stuff like that, we have people who have really given up their entire lives for us to be alive today, for our freedom for our happiness, for our democracy, for our life, basically. And 
for those people to be forgotten. Imagine that. That's unthinkable. So when you think about the fallen soldiers, I just saw a picture. I don't know. I'll have to find that if I do edit this video. I don't know if I'm going to edit because it's going to be pretty long, a little bit longer than usual. But I just saw a picture on Instagram of the dog tags, all the dog tags of the fallen soldiers that were a part of the Vietnam War. And this thing is like, this thing is huge. It's like, I don't know, it's like, it's probably the size of my entire yard. <laughs> Hanging from the roof, filled with dog tags of every fallen soldier. And that, you know a dog tag is only about this big. <laughs> okay, on a little silver, silver chain. That's how many of those are on this thing. That's how many people gave their lives for us to live. Okay? For the, their fellow man to live. Not all of them believed in white supremacy. Not all of them were white. <laughs> you know, who were soldiers who were enlisted in the in the army at that time. So think about it. World War One, World War Two, just in most recent times now, you know, all of the civil wars, the 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 the, the Hiroshima, the the the, <laughs> the Pearl Harbor, the Holocaust for God's sake, the Holocaust. I mean think about all of the people who gave their lives so that we could be free, so that we could live. So for them to be forgotten now, this is some serious stuff. Like that's what I have a little issue with. I have a big issue with it, as a matter of fact. And so heroes come in so many different forms, our heroes, men and women, and children as well. So what they did for us, you know, can never be repaid. And so the simple honor and respect and reverence to them is paramount in my book. Um, so now when you think about slavery, Okay, here we go now. This is the next part of it because I ran into the wars and stuff like that. When you go a little further back from that, you have slavery, you have the African diaspora, you have all of this thing that went on. Imagine the people who gave their lives then. <laughs> Just imagine the amount of people who lost their lives then, you know. Those were your ancestors as well. Not all of them were slaves. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe I have a little bit of everybody in me. <laughs> because like to be this awesome, I can't limit myself. Just if you think that you are God and that God is within you, how can you limit yourself to one people, a one race, one ethnicity? I don't do that. That's why I love all people. That's why I was always probably viewed as different than everybody else because I welcome everybody as long as you are loving and and um, friendly and you know supportive of me I'll be the same with the way with you and even if you aren't I just leave you the hell alone I am a person who I don't have time for it okay <laughs> I love myself too much for that but like I said imagine now from back then the people who were being stripped from their lands all of this kind of thing were happening people actually were volunteering their own people to be enslaved just so that they can eat. You look at back from Egypt, all of this thing that went on with, with, the, with the, the Egyptians and the Israelites, look at all of that, like it's deep, it's really deep. And so now this is what I'm saying to reverence and honor these people in our past, because the past, the present, and the future are all connected. <laughs> people say, oh, don't dwell on the past, that's the past. How the hell do we get here today if it weren't for the past? <laughs> How will we make it to the future if it isn't for today? You see what I'm saying? So, like, this is crazy. We have to find consciousness. We have to rise above this thing, this 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 mental psych that they're putting on us. The system is... The system... This is the next thing I just thought about. The whole ancestry, DNA.com, all of these tests that show you your ethnicity. Uh, I would spend the maybe was it $299 if I I still may not be a hundred percent positive that the results are exactly accurate because I already believe that I have everybody in me so like I don't need a test to tell me to determine what how much percentage I am of this of that of whatever you know I I am I just am <laughs> and my question is if they've taken us taken our history, taken us from our land, taken us from all of our spirituality, all of these things have been stripped from us. 
why in the hell in the world would they want us to know who we are? I just, just think about it. Think about it, okay? <laughs> things may have changed nowadays. It's 2018. Things may have changed. But at the same time, when you think deeper about the system, when you think about the oppression of a certain people, when you think about all of these things, you have to make sense of this. And you have to be, that's why you have to get to know who you are so that nobody has to tell you who you are, okay? <laughs> so I was watching now, I was watching uh, uh, somebody's video the other day, and I am a subscriber of hers, but I haven't seen a video of hers in a little bit because I was busy doing all these other things, trying to do my own videos. But since I started searching, researching this topic, I was watching hers, and I said, okay, wow, it's a good thing I did watch that. and. I don't know, I'm going to talk about her here. Her name is Aphrodite Stone, the starseed healer, and she's awesome. She's on fire, okay? <laughs> but I just want to say, she's she opened my eyes to a lot of things about this topic, about this ancestry, you know, honoring. And a lot of times, th I agree with one of the things she said first and foremost about not worshipping the dead you know we're not I'm not worshiping the, the dead I'm not looking forward to worshiping the dead <laughs> okay like I said I don't believe in ghosts I believe in spirits though you know a ghost and a spirit just think about it it's two different connotations but at the same time I believe that when you look at the ancestors and stuff like that not all of them are worthy of being honored and that's something that really jumped out at me because I'm like, whoa, whoa, that is deep. It's the truth, <laughs> okay? Because not all of them are worthy of being on. Things that I heard my grandma talk about that she heard when she was a child, like her great, great people talk about, was deplorable. It was sickening. It was sad. It was hurtful. It was evil a lot of the times and so we are not trying to that's why first of all the worship is not as that's out of the picture for me but second of all the honoring i want to always remember now when you do this whatever practice you're going to do to going to employ to honor your ancestors remember to call on the benevolent the loving the gracious the pleasant the the positive spirits not just generalize it and say, oh, this is for all of my ancestors out there, you know, thank you for creating me. A spirit is an entity, it's a real thing. And when you wake, awaken this thing, these things come to harbor within your home, <laughs> within your life, because you're the one who's summoning it, you're invoking that spirit. So to say, just generalize it and make it like a big thing, like, you know, where you have you have a whole tribe of flippant ancestors coming through, like, yeah, okay, which one caught me now? <laughs> That's retarded. I don't want to do that because we know in our past, in our history, just because black people have gone through so much oppression and so much pain and struggle and hurt and suffering does not make all of them holy. Does make all, doesn't make all of them like my grandma, you know, the, the love, the loving, caring, giving you the skin off her back type of person. No, it's not that way. And so that's something that really stood out to me. And thank you for that message, uh, Aphrodite. Thank you for that so much. Big ups, you know, blessed one love. I am so intensely <laughs> getting worked up by this subject because now when you think about the ancestors also, what they become is somewhat as of a servitor. I did a video on servitor creation, but when you start to honor and, and bring alive, bring awake these people, these spirits, that's what they become, somewhat of a servitor. You can give them an image in your mind, you can give them a responsibility, a duty, and say, okay, I could say that about my grandma. Like, hey, she's my guardian angel. Like, okay, whenever I call her name, she's on it. Like. I could do that as well, but I'm not going to do that because all it's about for me is paying tribute, giving thanks, and now when we get into see deeper, the deeper part about it, the memory of them, the memory of them is where it, 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 is, it is all at because I see myself day in, day out becoming a little bit more like my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and certain things that she did, certain things and qualities and tendencies she had, 
I kind of try to not become because I am my own person, but at the same time, some of them are just inherent in me because I was raised by her, because I spend so much time with her. Now, when you get into the ancestor money and stuff like that, this is the next part of it that I want to just dive into a little bit. You know, the ancestor money is supposed to be burned, basically, to pay off the debt of the dead. The debt that, that the dead have left behind <laughs> so that you're not the one struggling and suffering and never seeming to have enough because of their financial debt that was left like just kept on trickling down the line you see and this is not supposed to be I believe it actually is somewhat of a selfish act but in the same manner it is not because what is here on this side like i said there's a supernatural and there's a natural okay so you have the financial debt on this side in this realm in the 3d right here but on the other side you have that same thing that that but it's a cosmic debt basically that's some creepy stuff that's some deep stuff that we want to do some more research into but according to miss stone <laughs> she has gone into depth of the studies of this ancestor money the Joss paper and a lot of it that I saw online when I was looking up myself is of the Jade Emperor the Chinese Emperor you see the figure of this Chinese man on there and that Emperor was supposedly that now you know Jade just from me dealing with just from me dealing with crystals and stuff like that I know Jade represents money that's the green stone that represents money so we're going to talk about the jade money and if you want I can put a link in this video of Miss Stone's video talking about ancestor money. So the jade emperor is who I'm looking for, the jade emperor. And the purpose of burning this money like they said is to pay off or to help give the ancestor spirit, ancestral spirit the funds or the energy that they need that they didn't take with them from this side okay now the thing about it money many are conflicted and bound by the demons of poverty as well as the spirit of lack this is something I just googled it Jade Emperor money right as a child of the goddess Lakshmi I have a natural abhorrence for those lower forces therefore I offer this product as an antidote to some of the levels of disparity when one has the flow of finance you can concentrate freely on your own spirituality and a lot of the times our ancestors they went down in a little lost way too they were lost they were followers of certain doctrines certain religions because of poverty because of you know look at the slaves who were who held more tightly to the idea and the image of Jesus Christ the white Jesus than the slaves because who were poorer than them at that time poverty you know you need you need something cannot come from nothing okay you need that substance you need that abundance in order to create further abundance all right and so that's the purpose of this ancestor money that is to burn is to be burned in order to pay off the financial debt basically and a stack of like like they say about a couple hundred thousand dollars or the equivalent of a couple hundred the equivalent of about eight hundred thousand dollars you can get like a big stack or book for less than five dollars basically if you go to Chinese stores if you go to those special shops and stuff like that you're not gonna find this every anywhere you order it online um, I found a website that is exclusive for selling these kind of stuff now I'm just gonna go into here five ways that we could honor our ancestors before I take this in any further okay De dedication of positive actions that's the first way that you can honor your ancestors you don't always have to set up an altar that's one way of course of doing it or burn joss paper dedicating your positive and actions to your ancestors doing good deeds for yourself and for others you know seeking to fulfill your life's purpose finding out like I said yourself who you are and what you are meant to do what your calling is and answering that call taking care of your spell self in a spiritual way, taking care of yourself in the physical, mental, 
mental, <laughs> mental, physical, mental, and emotional. Of course, getting clean, being sober, all of this is going to allow your mind to be open enough to hear the messages or to seek wisdom and truth and information. And this is why we outgrow people in situations also, because as the more we get to know who we are, the more we know what we want and what we don't want. That's the reason. The second way we can honor our ancestors is to be willing to receive direct communication through dreams and signs and synchronicities or through some ritualistic practice like meditation. Now, I'll be honest, I have not dreamt about my grandma. I maybe dreamt about her once or twice and that was early, early back in my early 20s. That's like, that's like really after she, after she passed on, like, and that's only a friend about, like I said, once or twice. So I would probably have to go and do some meditation or do some praying, use some crystals and kind of open up that question to the universe to show me the answers and to send me signs and stuff like that, to see things. Some synchronicities have been happening for me lately, but I'll get into that later on, <laughs> okay? Now, of course, you have to be in that state of consciousness to receive those messages. and. You definitely, like I said, want to have dreams or have connective or communicative presence of the benevolent, of the pleasant, the loving, the positive, you know, giving, healing, caring ancestors, not those evil, bad, nasty spirits who you, if you could, they could come alive again, you'd kill them yourself. <laughs> um, like I said, synchronicity through signs just in your waking hours seeing things like how I'm talking about her right now like if I saw pearls or something like that that would be a sign because that definitely was my grandma's favorite type of jewel like if I saw something like she loved Shalimar perfume she loved Chanel number no. five she loved pearls she loved Demitas cups and <laughs> like Queen Elizabeth type stuff like so those definitely be synchronicities and signs and a, a synchronicity is known now um, by Swiss psychologist Carl Jung. Carl Jung, if you guys are, you know, he's talked about a lot of things related to psychology, to find synchronicity as two or more events that are directly and meaning, meaningfully related, which would, uh, which would otherwise be unlikely to occur. And so that's how you know when you hear music, a certain line of a song just hits you or as a car is actually passing you you just happen to hear two words and those words resonate with what you just finished talking or thinking about animals things like that flowers all of those things of nature usually just you know music is very powerful so pay attention to the signs open up your eyes to the signs and don't be afraid of the signs the signs are here to guide you just as the stars are <laughs> number five establishing the altar the ancestor altar you know of course they have graves they have places you can go and visit and you know set up your flowers or give them gifts bring them things or whatever like that you can do that but if you want you can set up an altar like they say don't do it in your sleeping space don't do it where around the kids or whatever and you want to give them you can put jewels you can put like I said uh, an offering of food or flowers use your crystals you want to use have a candle set up you want to have um, a picture of theirs or some paper with their name written on it their name or names written on it the names that you know of course um, you want to have also they said some kind of, of item that was meaningful to them so like if they like to smoke or drink or if they like I said if like my grandma she liked them and task teacups you put that a, a nice teacup the most beautiful teacup set you could find <laughs> you know you put that out there um, your incense the typical the typical spiritual things that you would set up on an altar they call those things vices like I said with the cup or whatever it's close to them things that they had were their favorite things during their living life um, 
you can have your ancestor money on there you need a cup of water you know water is like a gateway like a portal between two worlds that's one of the elements that is very of a spiritual nature um perfume like i said crystals all of that um basically you can put whatever you want but those things are the most important right there that i mentioned before and the offerings like they said sweets honey food flowers you know just gratitude and in invoking the presence of the benevolent ancestors after you've done all this you know you can use a divination technique such as your tarot cards if you happen to be a tarot card reader to see if your offering was well received to see if you know how is this going for you so you guys that is my topic on that today I am so thankful you're watching my video. I don't know how it's taken me this long to do this, but as I go further into the depth into my studies about this topic, I'm going to do more videos about it. And if you like this video, just give me a thumbs up, a happy thumbs up, and subscribe on the side. Hit that bell that notifies you when I come back with a new video because that will be very soon. And thanks again. Like I always close out and say peace, love, blessed be, guys, and namaste. Thanks for watching. See you later.